on my way to work today, and I wanted to talk about my father. Going to parents, weary and warm. His birthday is coming up. It's August 19. He was born in 1910 in Nebraska. And I think the reason he's on my mind is because I have been working on a story about his family set in Nebraska about 112 years ago. But he rose above it all. I don't know all of my cousins. I see some of them really struggling. And there are many reasons for this. I think one reason is that there is an echo of a message in our family that's been passed down from 1912 Nebraska. And that message is, you're no good and you need to know your place. We didn't pass it down on purpose. It's just just still sort of instilled in our genes and we didn't quite let go of it. And you can let go of it. You, you don't need it. So I'm out on Ancestry.com and I'm looking for new records to add to my family tree when I notice my little brother's death certificate. Now, we adopted him when I was not quite seven and he passed away from an accident when I was 12. So he was five years old when we lost him. And I've never ordered his death certificate because I was there so I didn't need it. But so I pulled it down and looked it over because if you're a genealogy person, you know, we love our death certificates. Normally people go, oh, you'd look at a death certificate, but I have a collection of death certificates about all of my ancestors from further back. And I'm remembering some things that I hadn't remembered before. Now my dad, he was about five, four. He probably weighed 110 pounds soaking wet. He was the runt of the family. He was the youngest. He was never athletic. He had to drop out of school when he was about 14. He got a job washing dishes at a restaurant 12 hours a day, seven days a week until he couldn't stand that anymore. For a while, he was working at a meat packing plant that specialized in butchering turkeys. Some of the guys there, they actually held him down and put turkey droppings in his mouth. Rough, rough crowd. That kind of bullying was something he was subject to as a kid. He later went back to school and finally graduated at the age of 22. He served in World War II. He served as a medic. That's where he met my uncle, who later introduced him to my mother. And so he he was never like, you know, the big strong guy. I think you would think of him as a nerd now that's a little bit more in style these days, but it wasn't so much back then. You were supposed to be like a manly man back then. But I'm looking at this death certificate and one of the things you'll see on here is that the informant is my dad. And I'm remembering that this accident happened at the neighbor's house and somebody had to be the witness, identify my brother and my mother was on her way up there and my dad said, send her back home. I will be the witness. I will identify. Do not let her see this. So this awkward little man that everybody, when he was a kid, said he was a sissy. He was the hero of the day here. And, and that's what I'm thinking about. And I'm thinking of other things about him too. When I was in high school in Oregon, you don't have to pump your own gas, but I was not a very good driver yet. And I was afraid to pull up to the gas pumps. I was afraid I would get too close or too far away. And I was kind of shy about talking to the attendant to tell him to fill it up. So when my car got close to empty, I would come home and then he would take my car to the gas station, which was like, 12 miles away <laughs> and he would go fill my car up for me and then bring it back. And then later I have my own house, but a block away from his house in Tennessee and I have kittens and he comes over and he builds me this box to hold my kitty litter box. And so my kitty litter is inside this enclosed box in the garage. And not only does he build me this box, but he comes over a couple times a week and changes my kitty litter for me. That That's my dad. Here's another thing with my mom. She found this place that would sell polyester material by the 
pound. <laughs> and she would use it for everything. She would make polyester quilts. I, I had so many polyester clothes. Oh my goodness. So while she was pawing through all this polyester, he would stand there patiently in the aisle on the side, holding her purse and whistling. Just stand there holding her purse. Yeah. He was a good guy. Dad, this song's for you. Served in war, came back. So, what is the point to all this? Oh, I drove past my exit. Awkward, small, they didn't see. He was a hero. So, the younger people in my family that I, now that I see that are struggling, the issues are the issues we've had all forever, you know, addiction the economy, just trying to figure out the best way to raise kids right now, all, all the things. And if my dad could do it, you could do it. Be that person who steps up and says, I'll be the informant. Be that person who takes the car and fills it up with gas and builds the kitty litter box. Get up and go be the hero in somebody's life. Happy birthday, Dad. A heart so pure, a love so true Dad, this song's for you But he rose above it all In each gesture standing tall A heart so pure, a love so true Dad, this song's for you